Today we're gonna talk about how to raise your baby chicks with a broody hen, not inside. <laughs> if you've ever raised baby chicks before, you know that it can be a little hands-on, maybe a little cumbersome, but raising chicks with a broody hen is hands down the easiest way to do it. They do all the work for you. There are some things you should know before you raise your chicks with a broody hen to prevent some possible accidents or failures. And before those chicks hatch, you need to make sure that you're ready for them and having a good quality feed is very important. We use Scratch and Peck Feeds Organic Starter Mash for our baby chicks. And when we raise chicks with a broody hen, we actually put the hen on this feed too. Mom and chicks can all eat the same feed. The feed is for zero to eight weeks of age, but the hen will do plenty fine on this feed temporarily. And Scratch and Peck Feeds is actually running a starter bundle right now. So it comes with the starter grit and herbs. At checkout, use code BOKBOKBOUQUET15 for 15% off your order. So when the chicks are first hatched, you maybe sprinkle the grit on top of the food. The beauty about raising chicks with a broody hen is she teaches the chicks how to drink, how to eat, everything. So all you need to do is just have your feeder, whether you're using just a pie tin or if you have an actual chick feeder, and the hen will teach the chicks how to eat. And then the starter grit, you can just leave it on a dish on the side and the chicks will pick on it as they need. But in the beginning, you might want to mix it in with the feed because it helps them break down and digest their food. Chickens don't have stomachs like us where we break down and digest their food. They actually eat little rocks or what we call grit to help break down their food and they store it in their crop. So this bundle is a great value, becomes a everything you need to get going with your chicks and today we're going to really focus on preventing chick loss i see too many times on whether it's the chicken forums online facebook groups or even friends coming and saying my chicks are disappearing one by one they, they're just going missing well there may be some of you out there that have raised chicks and with a broody hen and have never had a problem let the broody hen just free range with the rest of your flock and had a successful rearing well if you're like me, I've tried numerous times to let my broody hen just be out free ranging with her chicks and slowly one by one I would lose every chick. So I've completely stopped that and my foolproof method now to successfully raise baby chicks with a broody hen is to have her rear the chicks in a brooder. When the hen is laying on her eggs, I'll probably um, move her and the eggs as soon as I notice into the brooding pen, she'll stay on that clutch. You don't usually have to worry. If she's a good broody hen, she won't abandon the clutch just by simply moving her. Put her in like a nest that she, she prefers something that's dark and covered. We used to use like an oil drum with a, a hole cut in it, like put her in there or a little nest box or even just a Rubbermaid tote. Just cut a little square in there, put her in there so she feels cozy and it's dark and nobody's bothering her. But I would remove her from that nest. And if you are leaving the broody hen in the nest box with her eggs, you're gonna want to take a pencil and make a mark. I used to just draw a ring completely around the egg so I would know what are the eggs was she originally sitting on because if another hen jumps in there and lays her egg there then you're going to be all mixed up on which, which egg is which and you're going to have some that are starting to be incubated and some that are further along and you're not going to want that because when the broody hen chicks start hatching under her they don't all hatch at the same time but usually within like a 48 hour window and that hen will sit there and wait for all those chicks to hatch before she gets up and takes them out for their first drink of water and their first time foraging and really takes them out she sits and waits for that so you don't want her to be like on a clutch of eggs where all these uneven incubation times so if you just get a pencil mark the egg that'll prevent that from happening but the easiest way is to just move her immediately into the brooding pen if you can if there ever was an accident to happen to an animal, it's a chicken. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the brooding pen that you have built or have um, make shifted up is completely chick safe. You're gonna wanna use hardware cloth, make sure they can't fit through the holes in the fence. Make sure there's nothing where there's like a rock or a board that has a small gap because the chick could get stuck in there, possibly get crushed. Make it as baby chick proof as possible. You don't want to have any injuries there. And the whole point is that you want the chicks to be able to be in there because if they are free ranging out, then another flock member could possibly bully, just pick at, kill the chicks because th those aren't their chicks. They're just going to see them as maybe a toy, or even food possibly, or, you know, the broody hen will do her job trying to defend those chicks. But 
You don't want her to be under that stress anyway. She's constantly fighting off things, trying to protect her chicks. That's a high stress environment. She's already have a lack of nutrition and depleted energy from being broody for 30 days. They barely leave the nest to eat or drink. It really takes a hard toll on their body and you don't want to add stress onto that on top of it. And in our area, we have a lot of aerial predators. So, you know, ravens, whatever birds could land and possibly get those chicks so you want that brooder to be safe keep those chicks contained in there and then she can have like the easiest time raising her chicks no stress from predators no stress from bully flock members just her her chicks safety food water there enough space for them to scratch around and her to start teaching them how to forage and play and if you want to build one of these yourself, we do have a video on how to DIY make one of these chick brooders slash hospital isolation pens. We'll link it in the description below. The beauty about raising chicks with a broody hen is that it's totally hands off. She does all the work for you. No needing to worry about temperatures, weaning them off temperatures into lower, lower temperatures. She does all that. We've had broody hens without us knowing hatch chicks like in the dead of winter they're completely fine the chicks even walk around in the cool temperatures and when they need it they go back under their mom the mom does everything you do not need to worry like when they are cold they will go to their hem for warmth no heat lamps nothing like she does it all it is hands down the best way to raise baby chicks she teaches them valuable things that we can't teach uh, the, the chicks like they get acclimated even stronger immune system because the bacteria in the dirt like existing in the environment being raised in a tote with shavings is such a sterile environment that they're not getting that beneficial bacteria in their gut they're not learning these foraging skills with the mom teaching her everything you're gonna have some chicks that have more street smarts to them, they're gonna know how to integrate back into the flock and integration into the flock is another key point I wanna get to because you are raising her in a brooding pen, not with the flock, you're gonna want that brooding pen to be either in your coop or in the run near view of the other flock because this is already integrating them into the flock when they get older. Because the rest of the flock members are seeing the baby chicks already, they're already used to the idea that they exist. So when they are large enough to be released, then they will have a smoother integration than if you had this brooding hem with the pen far away and then out of nowhere you push them all back into the flock. Well, the mom's now lost her place in the flock because they didn't see her exist. Just like if you ever had a sick chicken and you brought it in the house or something, when you release it back out, it's gonna get bullied. Well, if you have the brooder in view of the flock, they're not gonna lose their place in the pecking order. They will stay there established, they'll already be aware of the chicks and then you can safely release them. I would wait at the minimum two months of age, three to four months is best, as long as they're like big enough that you don't think like an aerial predator will pick them off and then the flock can see them as big, bigger chickens. As long as they're still not tiny chicks, I would say four weeks is still a little too young. Two weeks, um, two months minimum, I would say is best. Even though your broody hen is going to be doing all the work for you, just use a little common sense. You're going to want to still check up on and make sure their food and their water is filled, the water hasn't fallen over or something. Make sure that you're still keeping an eye out. And why wouldn't you want to? There's nothing more beautiful than seeing a broody hen raise her chicks. It's the cutest thing you'll ever see. Just random cute little fluffy chick faces popping out of the feathers of the mother hen under their wings you'll just see chicks walking around on her back oh it's it's the cutest thing you'll ever see it's beautiful to see nature doing nature and silkies here are usually good broodies i mean you can't just say that one breed of chicken is hands down there might be like personality differences chicken to chicken but usually silkies are little brooding machines all the broody chicks that i've had raised here on this farm most of them have been from silky hens so if you are lacking broody chicken in your flock and you want one i highly recommend silkies they do go broody really often and that may be annoying but if you want a mother hen this is a little brooding machine <laughs> if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up let us know in the comments how you like to brood your chicks and your experiences with broody hens and what are some breeds of broody hens that you like to use thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys next time thanks